Chris, welcome to this week's class. So glad to have you here with us today. Alex, so fun to be here, man. What a fun venue. Yeah, absolutely. It's already We've already had some good conversation with people, and we'll jump into Q&A after we do a quick little recording so that other people that couldn't attend today could take a look at the replay and hopefully learn something as well. But before we jump in, Chris, can you quickly just give us a little bit about you and why you're the one talking about this whole mastermind thing today? Yeah, so the simple answer is I'm a failure by trade and training probably, I guess training too. If you ask my kids what I do for a living, they say my dad's a failure. We've, we've had that theme since we were doing like, um, you know, you go and like get to show up in your kid's kindergarten class and talk about what you do for a living. And unless you're like a, unless you're a firefighter, a cop or a doctor, your role is pretty boring. So I messed up a ton in building e-products. So learning how to sell my information. And most of us who are here, if we're into podcasting, y'all, we're trying to figure out how to monetize our information or our passion somehow. And I went down along the wrong paths. And then ultimately I was in a mastermind as a student. And the people in that mastermind were all folks who had been very successful at e-courses and e-products, e-books, all that stuff. And I was explained, it was in, it was in Boise, Idaho with, with a company y'all know lives in Boise. I was in that guy's high-end mastermind. And it wasn't the author or host of that mastermind that was so impactful, although great guy, it was the people. And they were like, well, Chris, how's the mastermind going? And I was like, Awesome. Day two. Loving it. How's it going for you guys? And like, no, how's your mastermind going? And I realized, oh my gosh, I don't have a mastermind. If that's what you're asking. Yep. And then they were like, oh, dude, you got to start with the mastermind before you have courses and ebooks and all that other stuff. You start with a high ticket mastermind. I, like nobody told me that I already bought all the e-course courses. Like, come on guys. So anyway, six weeks later, I had a full mastermind. It worked. And ever since then, I've kind of just been a huge fan. So not a failure anymore, just came from that, right? Do your kids realize that things have changed or they just still assume it's same old type of thing? <laughs> we, uh, we talk about failure a lot and we travel the world quite a bit. So I'm not sure if they're confused about how awesome failure is or if they no, we get it. You know, we get it. My team, I do the same thing. I think this is as all of us here as leaders, I think it's important for us to embrace failure because frequently my team and your team, we make mistakes. I do. And, and knowing how to like use that mistake, that failure, so to speak, as a positive thing in a way to springboard into the next thing is such a super skill um, when it comes to really leveraging success. Some people don't like that negative word failure, but let's, let's call crap crap. It sucks, right? Bad day. No big deal. What are we going to do about it? Yeah, you know, it reminds me of John Maxwell, who writes more about failure than success, uh, more mm -hmm. about failure and leadership than leadership itself. That's actually where I learned the importance of being willing to, to fail on the way. But anyway, different topic for that we're going to be jumping into here. I want to go ahead and get into how we can actually create our own high ticket mastermind, what this actually looks looks like. And we've got podcast hosts and podcast guests attending here. And does that work on both sides of the, that, that equation there? Can both a podcast host or a podcast guest have a mastermind, it actually makes sense with what they're doing? Oh, totally. Yes. So ultimately, you have to kind of have three things going for you to be in the space of launching a mastermind. All right, first up, you got to be an expert. So whatever it is you're hosting or guesting about, you're an expert at something. Second, you have to be a natural giver. And again, for most of us who are hanging out and, and doing this sharing thing on a podcast or something like our own platform, we like giving, we like sharing, we like talking it out. Third, you have to be a good communicator. So just because you're an expert and you really want to help people, if you can't communicate, it's really hard to be a mastermind leader. And there's lots of courses and classes around that. But the expert thing, you got to master. You got to figure out what your thing is. The giver thing, you're kind of born with or have become by who you want to be as a human. And then the communicator thing, another one of those, you're either born with it or you've learned it somehow. If you got those three things lined up though, you'll quickly have a successful high ticket mastermind or group coaching program. That's pretty interesting. So just going back through those things real quick to be an expert, a giver and a, a good communicator, right? Someone who can communicate yeah. well, starting with expert, because I'd love to dive into these things. First and foremost, expert. I think that many podcast hosts and guests at least have a right direction for this because many of them have a certain topic to cover if they're the guest, right? They're always getting on shows talking about something that is their expertise. And if it's a host, many of them are saying, my show is for X, 
or we accomplish X, Y, Z together type of thing. So they've already kind of got that direction going. So if someone's going to make a high ticket mastermind around that first thing there, would you say you just align it directly with what you're talking about on podcast or what your show is about? Absolutely. So it's not hard to figure out what your expertise is in. You, you're already talking about it. People are asking you questions about it. If you go back and listen to, if you're a guest on a show, you go back and listen to what the hosts dive into. Oh, hang on. Tell me more about that. And you realize they're kind of off script and they're just asking questions to satisfy their own curiosity. That's a really good sign. Like make note of that. You can, you know what happens. We've all been on shows a bunch. You see how it works. All of a sudden, somebody's chasing this rabbit and you realize, I think they're asking questions for their own benefit here. That's a super good thing because that means you've got their interest. What you're talking about is worth something. In, in a lot of times, when we're asking to be a guest on someone's show, they're allowing us to be a guest, not because they think we can just serve their market, although that's their primary goal, I'm sure. But let's be honest. They also want to take 30 or 45 minutes to pick your brain and figure out, wait, how do you do that? So, so be really aware of that because that's a really cool thing to note. Oh, this is what's coming up. This is not only my expertise. I don't know how to answer this question, but I can now realize in real time and real relationship that people want this from me. That's you can monetize that. Once you hit that spot, you can monetize that. It makes a lot of sense. And, you know, I'm, I'm just thinking about, about how many of us, we jump on different shows, but sometimes they're not necessarily super focused, right? Like we'll kind of go on like a broad range of shows. Do you find that that still works as a funnel? Or do you have to get like really strategic with the type of show you're on? And on the flip side, if you're the host, do you have to get more specific with what your show is about to really make something like this work to show that you're an expert in that space? It's okay to be a little bit more broad. You know, if you're the, here's my, here's my take on that. If you are the, let's talk guest first. All right. If you're the guest on a show, all you're doing is trying to search for a host and their audience that are lined up with your potential ideal target market. So I only, I'm just blowing my cover here, guys. Oh my gosh. These are the dirty little secrets, right? No, I hate doing this. I'm only on shows when I think the audience is relevant to what I have to sell. Let's just shoot straight down the middle. No BS here. The audience needs what I got and the host needs what I got. That way, if I connect to the audience, yay, they win, I win. If I connect to the host, yay, they win, I win. I'm looking for that double opportunity. If I'm the host, then I'm looking for people who I could potentially help with my expertise or, and get this, I freaking love doing this, that I could exchange services with or markets with or affiliate setups with or something where that, that guest that I'm having on my show can benefit me and I can benefit them. I'm not looking to have people on my show so they can sell me, but I am looking to see, okay, you do this. We've really been talking about this as a leadership team in my group lately. Like, I know you need what I got. Can we partner on this and make something happen? I'm, I'm only on shows to make things happen. And usually the focus of what's going to happen is not on the audience. It's on the two host slash guests connecting the right way. If that connection happens, it, it becomes magic. And Alex, you know that. I mean, gosh, happens all the time. Yeah, it does. And I've, I think people are gonna have some questions on that. And I definitely will. But we're going to jump to that in the Q&A part of this when we're done recording, just for sake of time. But what you bring up there is really important. That's something that I've, I've learned over years, and people like you have consistently reinforced the importance of that. But uh, to move right along here to being a, a, a giver, why does that matter with a, a high ticket mastermind? Because you say high tickets, that means it's gonna have some level of cost to it, right? But like, why the giver side of things? Can you explain where that kind of plays in? Absolutely. So it's really unsustainable to be in a live information training sharing model if you're not a natural giver. It will eventually eat your soul. And I'm not, I'm not making a morality call or a good bad call on natural givers versus not natural givers. That often comes down to personality. That's not right or wrong. But some people are wired to just want to like give and see the other person just succeed. And what can I do? And how can I help? And oh my gosh, I, you know, you've all had that person in your family or like 
you know, the, the coolest mom in the neighborhood who you all went to their house after school. And it wasn't because they had the coolest house. You know, there's the creepy parents who like build out the game room and have the pool and try to have the coolest house and they're not cool. And then there's the mom in the neighborhood who like everybody wanted to go hang out in the small house. You were stuck in the carport, sweating your cans off after school, but she freaking loved y'all. That's a natural giver and she can change lives, right? So a natural giver will be that person. And if you know, I, I love my people and I like constantly want to help them. I know how they can fix this. How can I help them do that? That's you. And when you're able to do that, leading a group of people will be energizing to you. And if you're not wired that way, it's okay. But maybe running your business down a different path where you're not the one putting emotional energy into a relationship is a better path for you. Does that, that make sense? Yeah, it does. And you know what, what you're saying reminds me so much of uh, Bob Berg's uh, book, The Go-Giver. I don't know if you've ever read that one. Yeah, Phenomenal book, like really a, a short read, but just really reinforces this whole idea of like, it's, it's about being, instead of a go-getter, being a go-giver, right? You start with that. I think it's such an important point that I could probably talk about that for like hours. So I, I could oh, yeah. talk about that for hours. So I'm not going to do that. Um, but to your, your last point here, being a good communicator, it, I can already tell, like before we even hit record, like you addressed every person who's in this Zoom room right now. Like you, you personally just said, hey, how are you? Like you asked about things in the room, like you've done this before. How do you learn to communicate really well? And normally these masterminds, if I'm not mistaken, they seem to be done over some sort of video conferencing. So getting good in that way, it's really important if I'm not mistaken, right? Can you kind of tie some of these things together I'm mentioning here? Sure, yeah. And I am sorry I missed I missed two of you on screen right now. I know who you are. You know who you are. Um, we had to hit record. So we'll come back to that. Don't worry. The, here's, here's my think on that. And, and Alex, thanks for bringing that up because part of that is it's what I want to do. Like I like being in someone else's dinner party or house party and then like actually paying attention to me. It feels good, right? So I want to do that for others. I think living by the golden rule is so simple here. Doing to others as you'd have them doing to you. So if you like the way that feels, play it out, right? I think of my mastermind groups. I think of my larger, so Group Coach Nation is the name of my brand. I think of my larger Group Coach Nation. The nation are thousands and thousands of people who are hanging around, free or paid. They're, they're like coming to my house party. And I want to actually reach them. Like, I want to say, oh my gosh, get on in here. It's so great to see you. Hey, here's a glass of wine. Hors d'oeuvres are over there. you got to freaking meet these two people. Come here, come here, come here. Plug them in, get them hooked up with some people. And then I'm off to the races talking to the next person. I think that's really important because we're here to make connections and find commonality and, and make things happen. That's what we do as humans and as people in business, whatever that looks like for you. So that's that kind of the underlying framework. And I think anybody can practice that. And Zoom, you know, really makes it easy. It's so easy. It's so hard to like, <clears throat> if you're like in a networking event at some convention where you all jumped on an airplane and, and meet somewhere, it's actually harder to make that first five minutes happen in person than it is on Zoom. Because in Zoom, I'm looking at you in your house. I, I know what you're wearing when you're not trying to impress somebody. I know what's in the picture behind you. Like I can find stuff here. And that's super cool. So I love the little world we live in right now. It's super easy to make these connections. I love that. That's super helpful. Thank you. I, I don't know what you get from my office here, Chris, necessarily, but- uh, Yeah, you live in a space here. station, which <laughs> I'm super jealous of. I do. It's cold up here. Um, I'm moving to Florida. Forget this. Um, <laughs> anyway, so become, just go back over those three things, becoming an expert, being a giver, and also being a good communicator along the way. So important, some key elements along the way here. Now I want to actually talk about how we can start to create our own high ticket mastermind. And Chris, you have to forgive me. I have not done this. This is something that I'm new at and working at myself. So I don't necessarily know the right questions to ask, but I want to make sure we get the, re the right information out of you. It just from, from, from my lack of knowledge, I'm, my first question is where do I start? Like if I wanted to do this for myself, what is my step one? Mm -hmm. Step one is never build without getting paid. And, and a lot of people kind of go around this the backwards way. So this is what my friends at that mastermind I was part of as a student taught me. They're like, dude, if you're building e-courses, e-books, funnels, three-part video series, blah, blah, blah. We've all done it, right? Like a thousand times. If you're building all that out and you haven't gotten paid to build that out, then you've done it wrong. You can go ahead and assume you've done it wrong. Oh, it's such a heartbreak. 
because we've all invested so much time and heart and money into our little things that we've created because somebody told us to go create and then and then launch it, funnel it, drive traffic to it, and voila. Okay, by the way, <clears throat> I'm hearing this in Boise, Idaho, at a company that is really known for building funnels. And the people there who are all ultra successful, we had to like show our income statements to get in that room for a year. They're like for real about screening people. They were saying, it's not about building a product and a funnel and running traffic. It's about selling something, improving your concept with a credit card swipe. And high ticket masterminds do that very, very effectively. So when you're starting the process, you need to have a place where you can organically engage with your, as you see it today, your current ideal prospect and have meaningful conversations in a chat, in a group, in a Zoom call, whatever. Hey, here's what I do. Here's what you do. I think we got some stuff we could talk about here. How can I help? Just no sales pitch here. How can I help you crack a code? Should we jump on a Zoom call and sort some stuff out? They will tell you what they want. It's not rocket science. All you got to do is start watching and listening. And then when you see that pattern of what they want, you simply have to say, oh my gosh, I can totally do that. Like I can help you figure that out. Is that something you like to do? Wait, like to do what? Like for me to help you figure that out. Well, yeah, that'd be super helpful. But what does that look like? Okay. That right there is literally a five minute long sales pitch. I just made it right in front of you. Go back and re-listen if you want to. That is literally how it works. And you can say, well, I have a done for you service. I do one-on-one -on -one consulting or I have a group coaching program, a mastermind. You can take that however you want, but you all of a sudden realize they want what I got. They're interested. It, at that point, once they say that, it comes down to form and price. And high ticket group coaching programs or masterminds are the most scalable high profit form for you and the most transformational form for the person you're helping. They will change faster. We can talk a lot about that because once you get your head around that, you'll realize, oh, I see why we're going on that path. But that's where you start. Organic, real relationships, listening, and they will tell you what they want to buy. Wow, that's it's so interesting. It's, it's not what I've been pitched before, if I can use that word. Uh, Chris, I've been asked to be in a lot of masterminds or to pay for a lot of masterminds with no value being added first, just straight up. Hey, man, I can tell you're not in a mastermind. I'm guessing people are assuming, which if I give it off that I'm not in a mastermind that easily, clearly I'm, I could <laughs> maybe use the help, right? But when the pitch is just, hey, you're not in a mastermind, I know you need to be in one. Here it is. It's, it's 20 grand or 30 grand, right? Like when people are just throwing that out to me, adding zero value before, it's been a bit of a turnoff if that makes sense. Cause I've not actually had the way that you're presenting this. I've not had that happen where someone's like, let me help you out. And I want to drill on that a little bit. So what you're saying is you're actually not necessarily bring up the mastermind or the, the individual coaching right away. What you're bringing up is just, what are you working on? Let me see if I can help out. Right. Am, am I understanding that correctly? Exactly. Yeah. Cause truly I don't want to be in a mastermind just to say I'm in a mastermind. Who has time for that? I, I want to fix something, right? Uh, me personally, I'm just, again, Golden rule here, do unto others as you have them done to you. By the way, every philosophy in every major religion has the same freaking golden rule. We have a slide in one of our mastermind presentations with all of them listed out. It's helpful. So put whatever assumptions you have about the golden rule aside and just talk about being a cool human to your neighbor, right? I have a need set and I know what I want. If you can help me do that in the most transformational way possible and make it worth my time and money, whatever time and money it costs, then I mean, I'm in like at that point, it comes down to, I trust you and believe you to pull it off or not. That's what we all have to find out from our audiences. And that's not via an online funnel that's listening. And it doesn't take long to listen well enough to fill up your first mastermind. And once you got five or 10 people in your first one, you've confirmed, you have proof that this works. I can go backwards from those five or 10 sales, re-listen to my Zoom calls, look at all the social media back and forth message I have with those individuals. And I have a very clear, predictable path of why this will work again and again and again and again. So going back to being the expert to make sure I can tie all this together, going back to being the expert, 
that's how you kind of, for lack of a better term, that's how you're funneling people to get on some sort of call. Because if you just say, hey, if anybody needs anything, hit me up, you're going to get a bunch of random people that don't make sense for the mastermind, if I'm not mistaken. Right. It's got to be somebody who has a need that your expertise can fill. Am, mm -hmm. am I right in saying that? So you do have to have some sort of top of funnel or some way to bring them to you, which can be a podcast, whether on the guest or host side, right? Do you just yep. recommend having some sort of landing page where people can book time with you or how? Or is it like organic outreach? Like, what does that look like for you personally? Yeah, so groupcoachnation.com is our website. You'll see there are lots of scheduling opportunities on groupcoachnation.com. And there you go. I see Sylvia so going there. You know what's cool? Um, no one in the past, I'd say six or eight months, has booked a call off of our website. It's not the way it works. What works is Alex and I here doing a podcast together. Alex asks questions about having his own high ticket mastermind. And I say, dude, let's talk it out. How can I help? That works because it's a relationship. If, you, if you're looking to make that new connection for a life partner in your life and you walk into a bar and you drop your iPad on a table in front of a bunch of people you find attractive or you think might be the right person for you, and it has a funnel on the screen and an application page, it's going to get kind of weird pretty fast. <laughs> yes. But if you hang out, share a few drinks, maybe see him again the next weekend, then go out to a concert. And then you're like, hey, what are you doing this weekend? Let's go out. It gets, it gets real because it's a connection. And, and marketing is no different than our most basic dating relationships. It's just making a connection and being authentic about it, right? I mean, I, I could not agree more that I, I wish that more marketing felt that way. It doesn't always, you can even see where my mind went. My mind immediately went to like, do you, how do you, how do you find them? Which for you, it's obviously, it's just, you're noticing somebody who's engaging on your social media or engaging on probably a podcast that you're on, right? Like commenting yeah. back and forth and you'll just kind of go after it and, and make that connection. I think that's such a great organic way to do this because if I'm not mistaken, you're not using any tools at this point. Like there's really nothing that people are making, like, there's no big upfront investment of like, well, you need this tool set, this tool set, this tool set. Or am I wrong no. in saying that? No, not at all. Alex, um, is there like any podcasting connection apps online that you can think of that we could find hosts and guests? I can think of one. I think What's it's a good called, one? I think it's called podmatch.com. I'm pretty Dang. sure that's the website. <laughs> okay, podmatch.com. I think I've heard of that. So here's the cool thing about that platform. They like let you find and search for people just like you can on LinkedIn. And so you can make a connection and you can say, hey, I noticed you got a cool show. Looks like we have similar audiences. How can I help? They look at your profile. They figure out you got something they want. 90% of the time, they will say yes to your show invitation because they want to learn from you. Not just because they need to fill a slot three months from now. That's so, so great. If you're hosting primarily, flip the script, start guesting like a beast because it's easier to find people who will raise their hand and say, I'd like to have you on my show when you are the guest and they're in a buying mode. They're willing to trade 30 minutes of showtime with you to learn from you. That's a first purchase, by the way. You know, it's easiest to sell the second thing, not the first thing. The first thing you're selling is getting on their show. So this platform that Alex has built so kindly for us like you buy the best package he's got, you jump on there. You guys all are on there already. And you do the cool stuff, right? And it works because you're not out there in social media land and you're not out there, take it this way. You're also not out there just as a podcast host, not knowing exactly who downloaded. I know how many downloads I got, but I'm not sure who they were. Now I'm in a real conversation with a real human who's someone else who has a show and that person could be my client. And if I resonate with their audience, awesome. But that's a secondary thing. And thanks for the uh, the shout out to, to Podmatch, man. Appreciate that. Um, podcasting in general is a powerful tool. I mean, it really is the people that are on podcasts. You can find your ideal client. You can find yourself becoming someone's ideal client through podcasting. It's happened to me time and time again at this point. The one thing that's in common is that it, it, it's uh, a rising tide lifts all boats, right? That's something I've always realized for me in podcasting. The more I get involved in the industry, 
the higher my my personal equity is growing along with the people around me, which I think is a beautiful thing about podcasting in general. Uh, Chris, mm-hmm. to kind of shift gears here a little bit, because I want to make sure that we that we cover as much as we can. I'm looking at the time. We've got a little bit of time left before we open up to Q&A. But once you decide, okay, I've, I'm starting to bring these people in, they're interested in being part of some sort of high ticket mastermind with me. How are you actually bringing them on, on like onboarding them? Is there a certain software that you recommend? Is there a certain like mm. standard way you recommend doing this? And then I want to get into meetings after that. But first, like, how do we get people into that? If they just say, yeah, I'm interested. We've added that value. They see our expertise. They can tell we can communicate. They want in. Like, what's that step? Yes. So again, build as you're getting paid, right? So if they say, yes, I want in. And you're like, awesome. I have a mastermind starting in four weeks. Yeah, four weeks. Would you like to do that? And they're like, yes, awesome. What's the date? You're like, uh four Thursdays from now? And you have no idea because, right, you just sold it and you hadn't built it yet. Good for you. Well done. Pat yourself on the back. So you pick a date and you start. Onboarding is as simple as jumping on whatever payment plan you like to use platform. We we have people who do it with Venmo, PayPal, Stripe, if you want to get all fancy, whatever. Agree on a price. Pick a payment plan if they need it. Send them the link while you're on the call right there. Super easy with PayPal to, to customize links immediately and send it to them a little harder with Stripe. And then they're in the program. It's like, cool, how do I log in? You don't have a login yet. You don't even know somebody's going to buy it until they just did. Just simply say, "Why?" well, before our first session, you'll get all that information. But right now, we want to make sure you're getting started. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop you this book on Amazon. I want you to read that. And in two weeks, we're going to have an onboarding call. Get this stuff in your head. Find a book that you like that gets people's minds moving. You don't have to build any content yet. It's already out there. Get them started. Have another call in two weeks. Get their money that day. Give them a pattern and a thing to do. They're excited about buying, excited about moving. Start going. Over the next few weeks, you can build out in Kajabi or Go High Level or ClickFunnels or whatever your favorite platform is. We've, we, we ran an entire mastermind on Google Drive just to show people you don't need it. We launched a mastermind, launched a program, did it all in Google Drive, <clears throat> excuse me, Google Drive, um, PayPal link. We created the logo for that one in uh, a Google um, slide. We did everything on free Google platforms, membership sites and everything, just so people could see that you didn't have to have the fancy because they're buying a transformation from where they are today to where they want to be. And they picked you because they trusted you. I promise it wasn't because you had a fancy landing page. That's powerful, man. That's important to remember. I think because you talked about at the beginning how so many of us, we start off with building out the the, the suite, right? Like the whole mm-hmm. tools that we're going to use. And some of it, it just looks beautiful sometimes. But you haven't won. You haven't actually uh, verified that that's going to work. That's interesting. But at the end of the day, it's built off of trust more than than just how good it looks. So I love that you actually did something entirely out of Google. I'd actually be curious just to see uh, afterwards what that looked like just out of curiosity because I, <laughs> I I love creative ideas like that where you're like, oh, dude, I did this totally different. But uh, but anyway, let's imagine now we fast forward. It's at four weeks. It's four Tuesdays from now, I think you said. That date hits. You tried to find a few more people to get in there. I, I don't know how many people is like a minimum to be a good mastermind. Uh, is there a number real quick before I continue that question? I would have five. Get five, five committed because you're going to always have one or two people who can't show up. And at least you want to have a little bit of a community, a little group to bounce ideas back and forth. It's okay. Important. Okay. Well, let's, let's imagine that you have seven people in there and five Perfect. or four show up. Let's just imagine that's what you're running with that day. Yeah. Now, do you just tell them, hey, every fourth Tuesday we're meeting or should it be weekly? Like, what's the expectation that you found that has, has worked there to keep people really engaged over time? Weekly is a big deal. And it depends on how busy your market is, really. But even the busiest of people, if they're buying it, the busier they are, the more successful they are, the more they expect to pay for a mastermind. Let's just get out of the way. If it's cheap, they're like, what? If it's well-priced, they're like, okay, I get this. They're willing to commit a spot a week on their calendar if they know that the relationships I'm about to build are valuable. That's important. Now, you don't have to do weekly live show-ups. You just simply need to do weekly live Zooms. I mean, like it doesn't have to be face-to-face across the country, right? It just needs to be a Zoom call where people can jump in there and you're guiding them down this path. Now, there's a couple of formats there. The path doesn't have to be slides, 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 one, two, three points. 
it could be a direction. Hey, we're going to go into this first step. You guys are all needing to make sure you're solid on. Let me present this topic for a few minutes and then let's all go around and hash this out. Nobody leaves the call without anchoring this point down. Y'all good to go? Okay, let's rock. You do that week after week after week in a guided pathway and you will change their lives. So it's not hard. Thinking about that, my, my next, my follow-up question immediately in my head, I'm like, okay, do I need to all have all 52 weeks of the next year planned out each step? Or do I just need to know like what the next thing is going to be? Like you want some strategy to keep it, to keep it valuable, right? So if I'm the host, the creator of this mastermind, I've got my people in it now, how do I keep adding the value? Like I could see some people maybe getting a little bit nervous about, am I going to run out of things? Uh, have you ever found, have you ever been in that place yourself? Oh yeah. When I first started, um, I, I really thought, oh no, what am I going to talk about? So it, you're going to be on one of two extremes. Usually people are like, okay, I'm a marketing expert and I don't know what to talk about. Well, freaking marketing expert. I mean, pick 20 topics. This is going to be hard to narrow it down. Right. And then some people have the personality are like, I know what to talk about. And they have like 12 page Google docs with detailed outlines. You'll never get through. So you want to find the, the minimum viable offer that allows you to put in the least amount of teaching and training time and effort and allows them to get the fastest transformation. If you're both doing that, you both win. They want a transformation and you got to deliver. So the number of weeks, if it's eight weeks, 12 weeks, 12 months, whatever, and how intense that process has to be leading up to, like what you have to know before you go into it, really just depends on how ready you are mentally and in your game. But even if you're the best ever, Let's say somebody's asking you, Alex, to learn how to build a podcasting hosting group connection software. Let's say that's your mastermind. That'd be kind of cool, actually, right? Um, I mean, get Alex's success in this thing. He's going to show you how to build the same thing he's built in like six months. He'll be out of business because I'll just taught you all how to do it. <laughs> the, if that was his thing, Alex, you shouldn't build week four's content. You should be solid on week one introductions going to give people some stuff to start with and a, a quick win. Week two, I know we're going week two, but during your Q&A after week one, you're going to learn what should be solid in week two and week three. At week two, you're going to learn what should be in week three and week four. You're going to have a lot come up in those questions. You're going to be like, oh my gosh. And it always is this way. I didn't realize how basic the information they need actually is. I thought they needed pro level stuff. They need ABCs. That's what's going to change their lives. I, I think this is a really powerful point here because, and the reason being is what you just said there is you, our assumption is, okay, because maybe you know this stuff you're talking about. If you're an expert in the space, you're already like mentally years, months, even maybe weeks ahead of them. But there's me, that question comes up and you're like, oh, I should have covered that question, right? Like and it, it sounds really basic to you, but I think that really takes a lot of pressure off. As long as you're able to get those questions out of people, then your content continues to drive forward based off these questions you're getting. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it just, it feels more organic. And I like that. It's, it's a lot less pressure on the person who's hosting it. So I, I, I think that's such an important point there. And, and Chris, we're going to get to Q and a in just a second here real quick. What have I missed? Like, is there something in here that you say that we, people have just got to hear that you have to share before we move on? No, I think you're on it. People often ask, what should my offer be? How should I price it? Um, you know, what's the offer stack look like? Where's the best place to start prospecting? You get all that kind of stuff, but ultimately if you're an expert, you're a natural giver and you can communicate. The rest of it is form and function. I'm, I, my job as, a, as somebody who teaches and trains how to build high ticket masterminds is to take you guys, let's, let's say y'all are amazing drivers and we'll shut up and do q and Just give us an analogy, you can run off of it. You guys are amazing drivers. Y'all all have Toyota Priuses. Love that car. I have one in my driveway. You all have Toyota Priuses. Y'all actually could be Formula One race car drivers. The, the form and function of how to build a high ticket mastermind is just as simple as taking you from the Prius and putting you in the race car. The pit crew is already there. The pit boss is already there. The, the Ferrari is already there. I got the track. Start doing loops. It's just a machine. It is the race car driver, though, who has to have the intuition and that skill set to be like, I'm not going to freak out. I know what to do behind the wheel. The rest of it's just let's start doing some laps. Go a little faster, a little faster each time. You got this. So don't overthink it. Let's do some questions. I love that. Chris, thank you. This was such a valuable conversation thus far. I'm going to jump over to Q&A, but first I'm going to stop the recording. So thanks, for, thanks again for being here and talking about this. So great to be here, Alex.